Hey Abraham, um, <laughs> I can't believe I'm here. But anyway, um, I've been following your teachings for about three years, and in those three years, I've manifested some spectacular things. Uh, but the question I have right now is that, uh, let us say I'm trying to manifest something and I want it to come really quick, okay? <laughs> And let us say that because you want it to come really quick, you're aware that it isn't coming really quick, so you're shooting yourself in the foot by wanting it to come really quick. Because your awareness that you want it to come quick brings forth your awareness that it isn't coming quick, which holds you in a vibrational discordant to what you want. So isn't it interesting? The quicker you want it, the slower it comes. Okay. Now, let us say... <laughs> okay, let us say that I'm using the, manife the meditation method. Is it more effective for me to meditate by getting into that meditation state and completely shutting down my thought process, which I can do, or let us say I want to manifest Jerry and Esther's monster bus? Is it better for me to get into that state and visualize that bus and think about it and feel extremely joyous while thinking about it? Is that a more effective way of bringing the bus in or is it better for me to just shut down my mind and just think about nothing? Well, it's a perfect question and we're going to give you the perfect answer S slowly. The answer to that question depends upon you. And what we mean by that is if whenever you think about having something wanted, if it makes you aware that you don't have it, then the more specific you are, sometimes the more specifically resistant you are. It's like every subject is two subjects. You pick up a stick that has something wanted on one end, the absence of it is on the other. So you have to decide which end of the stick you are vibrating usually on. So if it's easy for you to imagine the details of the bus, if thinking about it, in fact, feels so good to you that it takes you right into the vortex, then we would say the more specific you are, the faster it will come. But if thinking about it reminds you that you don't have it, then the specifics of it slow you down. So that's why it's a sort of molding thing. The answer to the question is, be as specific as you can be while still feeling good. So another way of looking at it is, by meditating and quieting your mind, the vortex will take you in. So once you are in the vortex feeling good, now begin pondering this desire. And as you ponder it, if you're able to still remain feeling good, then ponder it with more detail. And if you still feel good, ponder it with more detail. But if you get specific enough that it activates your awareness of lack, then the vortex will spit you out. Then you start the process over again. Get into the vortex in whatever easy way you can. Maybe by, by focusing on some subject that every time you think about it, you easily get into the vortex. Esther has a handful of those. She cannot think about the treehouse back home in Texas without going right into the vortex. And it's funny because she doesn't think about being in the treehouse. She thinks about the people who were building it and the joy they felt while they were building it. She had far more joy in the building process than in anything that she's done in the treehouse since then. But that treehouse and those men building that treehouse, they were like little boys again. It took longer to build that treehouse than it does most big houses because they were having so much fun they never wanted it to end and every board is especially cut board in other words they just got in there and they milked it for all the fun they could get out of it and when Esther thinks about the treehouse she goes right there lovable cat takes her right into the vortex unless she remembers that it got run over last year and then right out of the vortex she goes in other words as you find a subject that takes you into the vortex then milk it that's what we mean by do your affirming from inside so we teach meditation because, and you may laugh at this, it's easier to teach most of our friends to have no thought at all than to have pure positive thought on their subjects of desire. Because so many subjects of desire are laced with awareness that it hasn't come yet. And yet 
what we're teaching is deliberate creation. In other words, what could be better than to be in the vortex, flying high, focusing your thought and watching things come about? That's what you really intended, you see. So did, was that clear? Get in the vortex any way you can. Maybe meditation is the way. And once you're in there, think until the vortex throws you out. Then get back in there. And then think until the vortex throws you out. Until you show yourself that you are able to be a specific thinker of specific things wanted. Okay. The last There's one more thing that we want to give you here. And that is, this is an important answer to the basis of your question. You have to remember that you're not doing your creating from inside the vortex. You're doing your allowing from inside the vortex. You did your creating from outside the vortex. Most of it, I know what I don't want. Almost all of your asking happened from outside the vortex. So you ask and put it in there. Now your work is to allow. And sometimes when you start trying to create, it blows you out again. And here's the law that we want you to understand. The vibration of a question and a vibration of the answer are very different vibrations. The vibration of the problem and the vibration of the solution are very different vibrations. So when the problem has bounced you to the solution, can you see how your work is not to think your way in, but to feel your way in or to quiet your mind and stop resistance? If you weren't doing that thing you do that keeps you from the vortex, you'd be in there. And that thing you do is thinking thoughts that are resistant to the vortex. So meditation, easy way in. Appreciation, easy way in. Chronic appreciation would hold you in the vortex. Chronic meditation would be a very boring life. <laughs> okay. I know source. I know I'm source. I mean, I know I'm perfect. I also understand the law of attraction. That which is the like unto itself is added. What I need more clarification about is that what is the exact difference between those two? How do they relate? How do they... Okay, I know law of attraction is like gravity. It's just it's a, it's a law. But I mean, what is the real separation between source and law of attraction? Well, law of attraction is an across-the-board law that responds to all vibration. Source is a vibration. Law of attraction is responding to vibration. So that's why we say, as you explore here in the contrast of your physical world and you expand, source takes that expansion and holds the vibration of that expansion. Then law of attraction responds to that vibration and that's what fleshes out the vibration and makes it the manifestation that then you call real world. So the difference between law of attraction and source is that source is a vibration that law of attraction responds to. Is there such thing as which one is more powerful? Well, the law of attraction responds to a vibration that's offered. And we like the direction of your question because all that has been lived has culminated into this vortex of creation that you are right now calling source. In other words, this source is a pure vibration that holds no resistance. So when law of attraction responds to this pure vibration that holds no resistance, that's why eternity is assured. And that's why well-being is promised, you see. So here's human out here worrying about this, shooting that one, killing that one, robbing from that one, plundering that one, worrying about all kinds of things. But as man has those experiences, he asks for improvement, which source becomes. And so that's why we can unequivocally state to you that this source that you will want to call God or source, we're calling it all that is, that expanded vibrational reality is the synthesizing and the best that is erupted out of all that has been lived. Ooh, it's so powerful. That's why we can stand here and assure you that well-being is the order of your universe. And that while as a human, you can temporarily pinch yourself off from it, that the well-being of all that is and the well-being of your planet is assured. Because when you ask, it is given. 
And there aren't enough of you, even though it's all of you, there aren't enough of you in physical form to pinch yourself off simultaneously from that which is source to do any real damage to this well-being that is promised that source has become in other words that's old news anyway over here is where life is you see that's why we never worry about your planet becoming deteriorated or it disintegrating or life becoming less because it defies the laws of the universe the contrast makes it become more and even no matter what the state of it is that you all might be examining and calling look at the way life is we say whatever is the state of being that any of you are looking at it's old news and that old news has produced new better news that source is a vibrational equivalent to that's why you must know your planet is not in peril. Thank you, Abraham. Did we get there? Absolutely.